Welcome back to The Average Drinker. I'm Dara, I'm your average drinker, and it's time for another whiskey review. And boy, do I have one for you today. That is the one that I'm probably gonna pronounce wrong, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try anyhow. And that is the newest release from Bardstown, the Chateau de la Bade. 2.0, version 2.0. So it's the newest one that just came out from Bardstown Bourbon Company. I've been excited to get this bottle, mainly because I heard so much hype around the very first batch of this, but I never tried it. So I have no like preconceived like idea, just that everybody said, oh my gosh, Bardstown Chateau de la Bade batch one was like the most epic pour ever. But we're about to find out how this one is to me, what my opinion is of it, what I think of it, if I like it, if I don't like it, why. We're gonna dive in, I'm gonna tell you guys what I think, and then I'm gonna give you my rating on this. So, as always, I tell you, nose, palette, and finish, a score simply based on that. So that's what I'm gonna do here today. Thank you so much for being here. So excited that you guys are watching. I appreciate you and I'm so grateful for your support, as always. All right, let's dive in, cheers to you. Ooh, ding, I almost poured that out. <laughs> That would have been really awkward, like psh, psh, all of it's out. All right, let's dive in here on the nose. And this one, by the way, is like a super rich dark color. It's really beautiful. It's like a, a beautiful fall amber evening in the glass. That sounded weird. I don't know. Anyhow, on the nose. On the nose, this one's really, it's very rich. Dark notes, like toffee, figs. I get figs, like toffee, figs cinnamon, oak. It kind of just smells like you're standing in the woods, like after it just fresh, freshly rained, like in a forest after the rain and you're smelling like cookies that someone's baking at their house or like fudge or something, like from a distance. Then it just really intertwined with like brown sugar, cinnamon, raisins, figs. It smells thick. It smells thick with not two C's, but CK. <laughs> that was so dumb. Because <laughs> Bill's always like, if I say it smells thick, he's like, oh, like T-H-I-C-C or double C's or triple C's. And I'm just like, no, no, I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, I'm moving on. Anyhow, it, the nose is great. The nose smells really great. Ooh, I even just got like an almond note. Yeah, an almond, like a almond butter. Mmm, smells wonderful. It really does. It smells really great on the nose. Oh, and if I didn't mention this, this is a blend of a 10 year Kentucky, no, a 12 year Kentucky and a 10 year Tennessee, and it's finished in Armagnac. Armagnac. Did I say that right? Yes, I did. So, two blended whiskeys. Finish in Armagnac, 107 proof. Holy moly, I'm out of control today. I'm all, I'm like, bloop, 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 twirl, reel her back in. Gotta reel her back in, reel her. Wait, I'm reeling backwards. <laughs> I can't even get that part right. I've lost it. Okay, so the nose is great. It smells really, it's like a lot of layers. And that's what I think about. Every time I smell this, there are a lot of layers to it. Every time I taste it, there are a lot of layers to it. So now speaking of the taste, let's dive in. But yes, the nose is good. So here we go on the palate. Holy moly, that's got a lot of layers. Like I just said, a lot of layers. It's like a burst of vanilla, then a burst of brown sugar, then a burst of toffee, then a burst of like chocolate, white chocolate. Oh. Vanilla, yeah, I say I said that. Vanilla, brown sugar, white chocolate, toffee, rich, a little bit of that almond butter, but not as much. And it does not taste like super thick. Like, let me spin it around. Yeah, and it's not like super viscous either. It kind of, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have a lot of long legs on there. But it tastes really good. And that finish, oh my gosh, I'm sitting here and I'm like breathing and it just goes on and on and on. There is this like slight, like, fruitiness in the middle of it not like like we're not talking like a ripe 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 rich fruit we're talking more like a like i guess you wouldn't call a raisin a fruit but it does come from a grape so i guess that's kind of what i'm getting like this figgy grapey 
raisiny kind of sweetness that's intertwined there. Almost like a grittiness that kind of makes your mouth feel away, feel some type of way, but it's good overall and I enjoy it. But the finish is where it's at. This finish is going on for days. Let me take another sip here. Yeah, so right up front you do get that sweet, like a, just a light, mild, raisiny sweet. And then it rolls into that brown sugar, that cinnamon, that nutmeg, toffee, vanilla. And it's not like your typical like bourbon or whiskey at all, like your typical caramel, vanillas, notes. This is much different with a lot more layers. And it drinks, it's actually really crushable. And I did try it with a cigar and really, really enjoyed it enjoyed the richness of it matched with the cigar without too much sweetness, which is great. It's not overly sweet and it's not overly like dry either. Just really nice, really balanced and I like it. I really do like it. I think it's good. Yes, it's good. So now I gotta tell you guys what my score on this one is. And I, I like had to go back and forth on this one a little bit, but my score on this one is three and a half corks out of five. It's a good score. And like I said, my score is always based on nose, palette, and finish. Nothing else goes into that. So that's the score for the nose, palette, and finish. I think overall, the, the nose and the finish are my favorite. There are some funky things going on in the palette that I, I like, but it's just a lot of layers. So it depends on what mood I'm in and how I want to drink my whiskey. But overall, I really do enjoy it. And I think it, I definitely think it's good, obviously, because I gave it a three and a half out of five. Now, Here's another part that I just want to bring up. I, like I said, nose palette and finish is the only thing that I counter into my score. However, if I had to like counter in like the cost of this bottle, this bottle cost us $160. We paid $160 out of our own pockets to buy this bottle. And for that price, like it's, it's tough, right? That is a re like really expensive bottle. And personally, like now that I have one bottle, I'm not gonna rush out to get a second bottle. It's good and I enjoy it, but I think for $160, I could spend my money on a couple bottles. So that's that's my two cents on this. I enjoy it, but $160 is a lot of money. Like that's a lot of money. You could get like so many bottles of wild turkey for that. And I would expect this bottle to be like mind blowing for $160 and it just does not blow my mind. It's good. It's enjoyable. I like it. If you have a chance to try a pour of it before you buy a bottle, I would highly suggest that. If not, you're, if you're feeling like putting, spending a little money, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, maybe find a friend that has it and let you try it. I don't know. That's just my two cents. That's what I think about it. I think it's great. I love what they're doing at Bardstown. I have so many favorites. I think right now, like that Disco 7, I'm still, I keep going back to Disco 7, love Disco 6, and um, obviously Disco 8's really good too, so. Anyhow, going on a rant, I appreciate you guys, I love you, I'm so grateful for your support. If you guys have tried the Chateau de Labade, either batch one or two, let me know what you think. I'm curious, I'm always open to interpretation from anyone else, so thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'm Dara, I'm your average drinker, and I'll be back with so much more. See you guys next time.